Hi, my name is Farina Badwe, and I am an honor for to see you. The African Renaissance. The concept that the African people and nation shall overcome the current challenges confronting the continent and achieve cultural, scientific, and economic renewal is here, with young men and women taking the lead. Some call them the new school heroes. We call them under 40 CEOs. Farida was born in Lagos, Nigeria, but she spent her early childhood life in Dominica, Grenada, and then the United Kingdom. Her family moved to Ghana when she was nine years old. At 10 days old, Farida developed cerebral palsy from rhesus incompatibility of her parents. Hence, she was homeschooled by her mother until she turned 12. Despite the challenges accompanying a disability, Farida has become a respected and seasoned software developer with over 12 years experience in developing business and mobile applications. Farida Bedwi is co-founder and chief technical officer at Logicel. Welcome to Under 40 CEOs, Farida. Thank you for having me. Now, Farida, it's on record that you're from Cape Coast. Um, but then, people said you were born in Nigeria. So there's this tussle between Ghana and Nigeria. She's ours, no, she's ours. <laughs> now tell me once and for all, where are you from? I'm Ghanaian, but it's true. I was born in Lagos. Okay. Yeah. Mm. At, at the time, my parents were living there. Okay. Yeah. Okay, beautiful. Now, I mean, we've all heard the story. We're familiar with it now. Cerebral palsy, um, rhesus factor. But I do not think we can overemphasize um, the role that your mother played in all of this, in yeah. getting you to where you are today. Yeah. She's that superhero that we should all be worshipping, right? She definitely is. She put her life on, on hold for the first 12 years of my life mm. to teach me how to be as independent as possible, mm. as well as homeschool me. Mm. So I was homeschooled for the first 12 years of my life, mm. before entering mainstream school for the first time at okay. the age of 12. So tell me about this, um, your first experience in formal school. It was interesting because I didn't go to a private school or anything. I went to a government school. Oh, wow. And not just a government school, but a government school in a really poor part of, the, of, of Accra. Oh, wow. Yeah, because at that point in time, that was the only school that would take me. Yeah. And I am always grateful to them for taking that risk, because you're yeah. talking about 1992, 1993, about. Mm -hmm. By then, we were even more backward than we are now with regards to, to issues of disability. And back then, and up to now, a lot of people, when you talk about disability, it's only polio they are familiar with. They are not familiar mm. with neurological conditions or okay. anything like that. Polio mm. just affects the, the leg. It does not affect the other parts of the body. Mm. Whereas cerebral palsy affects the whole body. Mm. It, it affects the motor development of the patient. So mm. it affects the way you move, the way you talk, the way mm. it can even affect your sight and your hearing because the cerebellum that controls all those those areas of the brain mm -hmm. is what was it was, was damaged. Okay. So that's why it's called a bad person. Oh, wow. It is a brain damage. Mm -hmm. right. Okay. Now let's fast forward to when you got your first certificate and landed your first job. I actually got my first certificate when I was twelve. Before entering mainstream school for the first mm. time, I went to a computer training institute and did okay. three courses. Wow. Back then, we used to have something called Word, Word Perfect, uh -huh. Lotus 1, 2, 3, uh -huh. and Debase 4. <laughs> so I went to a computer training institute and did those courses. So Technically, that is, th th those were my first certificate. Okay. But after that, I went into mainstream school for mm. junior high school. I did that for three years. Then, because of the disability and friendly terrain of, of, of the senior high schools in, in the country, I could not go to a normal senior high school. Mm. So I had to go and do a computer course. Mm. So I did a diploma in the, mm -hmm. from the Institute of um, 
management information systems. At that time, they, they were a, a UK-based institution. Okay. And basically, you, you do the course here. Mm -hmm. Then the, the results are marked there. So, so, so it was more of an international um, certification. certification. Wow. I was six, 16 at the time, hmm. the youngest person in the class. Wow. Yeah, because it's something that that people who have finished university, people who have finished secondary school, go and, and do a professional course. It's actually a professional course. Okay. The course was was like a general overview of the various aspects of computing. Mm -hmm. So by the time you finish, you you know a bit of networking, you know a bit of hardware, you know a bit of mm -hmm. software and mm -hmm. databases and all mm -hmm. that. So while I was doing that, I we were able to, to zero in on where I wanted to specialize, okay. and that was software development. Okay. I like the idea of creating new things. When I finished the, the diploma, yeah. I decided to look for a job. Because the best way to learn software development is to do it on the job. Yeah because there's only so much you can learn in the classroom mm. in terms of the real life problems okay. that, that, you, that you'll encounter. Mm -hmm. I, I started working at Soft. Okay. They were, at the time, one of the three main software companies in the country. I worked there for three years as mm. a software developer. Okay. After that, I went to Rianca Solutions Mm -hmm. I worked there for nine years. Then after that, I went to work with, with a microfinance company for two years. Mm -hmm. Then while I was there, I developed an application for them. It made their processes simpler and easier. Mm -hmm. And it was easy for them to expand and open other branches. Mm -hmm. Then other microfinance companies came came to us to see what, what software they were using because they suddenly realized that this company had a competitive edge over the others. Mm. While we were there, they, we, we got a lot of requests for us to deploy to other microfinance institutions. So my partner and I, we decided to, uh, to, to start up our own software company called Logistia, and that is how it came into being. Uh, right now we have a cloud-based microfinance banking system, okay. which is being used by over 200 microfinance companies in Ghana. That's amazing. Yeah, and um, we are actually in, in the process of deploying for our first client in, in Lagos. So, wow. Yeah. This is under 40. CEOs. Okay, beautiful. Now let me just backtrack a little bit, um, back to when you were getting your bachelor's degree in computer science. That was at the University of Hertfordshire. Yeah. So what was most challenging about being in Hertfordshire at that time? It, it wasn't intellectual, it was more of um, the fact that for the first time in my life, I was on my own. Hmm. I had to learn how to Fully look, 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 look after myself mm -hmm. without any help from anybody. I had to learn how to go to the shop and buy my groceries and, mm. and, and somehow prepare something for myself to eat because mm. that, that was the first time I had actually been totally on my own. Oh, wow. Yeah. Initially, for the first few weeks, it was a bit difficult, but then after that, I just decided to mm. learn how to do it. And okay. It, it, it was okay from then on. Okay, beautiful. Now let's come back to um, G Kudi. G Kudi. It's, it's actually changed. We changed the name. Oh, what, what's the name now? Zigloy. Nice. Why the change the name? It's actually because of of your people. <laughs> when we were going to Nigeria, they said that um, G Kudi, because of the Kudi name, the Southerners will not like it because, because it's associated with the Northerners. Mm. So if we wanted to go to Nigeria, we have to change the name. Mm. So we had to, we had to, to find a neutral name, so, so, mm. so, so, so that it will not be something that, that the Northerners will not like, then we cannot mm. go to the North, so, yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. So is this cloud-based uh, banking yeah. system for yeah. microfinance banks, banks. Yeah. especially? Yeah. Now, how does this, does this work and what makes it so attractive? It means that you do not have to spend 
money buying server infrastructure. Mm. You don't have to spend money buying a backup generator. Everything mm. runs on the cloud. Wow. So all you have to do is to pay us a monthly recurring fee. Then we manage it. You do your backup, you do everything. You, all you have to do is to log on and run your operation. You don't have to worry about theft in, in the sense of somebody mm. breaking into your office and running away with, with, with your server. Then by the time you come in, all your client data is gone. gone. Yeah. Mm. So it takes away the headache of, of, of managing the IT part of the banking solution from the client. We, we do that for you. Um, Farida, you did mention that Logicel is a partnership. Yeah. Now, what are the key lessons um, that you wouldn't mind sharing in how best to make a partnership work? Mutual respect, understanding your partner's strong points and weak points, and compromising. Hmm. It, it's like a marriage. Hmm. In fact, it, 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 can, it can even be more than a marriage because you spend a lot, a lot more time with your partner mm -hmm. than, than, than you do with, 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 with your spouse or your True. relationship partner. Mm. You have to be able to trust the person. Mm. And sometimes when, when you don't agree with, with the person's decision, you have to know when to back off. You also have to know when not to back off, especially when it's something that you are that you have strong convictions over. Mm. But like I said, it is all it is all a matter of compromise, mm. and 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 the, and the fact that you both know that you are working towards the same goal. Your story continues to challenge um, young Africans, and you know most have said, if Farida can, then I have no excuse. Is that the narrative that you would like to keep in a bid to keep inspiring the younger generation? I would say, I mean, it's just the case of God because I never set out to inspire anybody. Hmm. I just set out to live my life. Mm -hmm. And if by living my life and doing what I can within my means to make my life good mm -hmm. for myself and for my loved ones, I inspire you and that is great. I'm happy that I inspire people, but mm. then I also want the people who are inspired by me to inspire other people. Mm. So hopefully, as the inspiration spreads around, we'll all make, make the world a better place. This is Under 40 CEOs. Farida has received numerous awards, recognitions, and accolades, and has been featured on mainstream media worldwide for her work. Now, in 2011, you won the Legacy and Legacy Ideas Award. Mm -hmm. 2012, National Youth Achievers Award. That was from the government of Ghana. Now, in 2013, you were one of Africa's most influential women in business and government. What do these, uh, do these awards mean to you? I think um, I'm being recognized. Mm. For, for living my life. Mm. Th that is what I say. That mm. as far as, as I'm concerned, I haven't done anything so great. So all I'm doing is living my life. And if by me living my life, you, people feel that I'm doing something great and they want to award me, I'm very grateful for it. I genuinely feel, feel very honored when I get any award because mm. I don't f feel, feel that I've done anything extraordinary to mm -hmm. deserve those awards. Mm -hmm. uh, one that I would like to talk about is the most influential woman in business and finance. That one is very special to me because they had no idea I was, I was disabled. Mm. They gave it to me based on the work that I've done. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And that is one thing that people with disabilities want. We just want the playing field to be, to be leveled so that we can compete equally with the other able-bodied people. We don't want special favors. We don't want mm. we don't want, we want to be to be awarded for something just because we have this challenge. Mm. We want to be awarded for it because we deserve it. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. We want a level playing field. That mm. is all. Okay. Uh -huh. So tell me, how has um, travel 
and interacting with diverse cultures added value to you and your business? Growing up, I lived in, in different countries. So obviously I grew up interacting with, with people all, all over the world, different cultures, different beliefs, different, um, different ways of doing things. I think it has made me a more tolerant person. Mm. I can go anywhere and easily assimilate into, mm. into the environment. I'm not very fussy when it comes to some of those things that, that people are fussy about when they travel, like food. <laughs> but when I travel, I, I, learn, I learn to fit into the culture. Okay, beautiful. Now, um, as a CEO myself, uh, I know that I've had to overcome several challenges to make the little strides that I have made so far. Mm -hmm. What are those challenges that you've, ha you've had to overcome to make the strides that you have in business today? Too many to mention. <laughs> <laughs> the first one is realizing uh, that I need my clients mm. and appreciating them mm. and learning how to be tolerant and how to respect their views regardless of whether you agree with them or not. Because at the end of the day, without them... You have no business. Yeah, yeah you have no business. Mm. Secondly, you have to learn how to work with people mm. from, from a top-down approach. Mm. You have to learn how to be patient. Okay. You have to learn how to be tolerant. You have to learn how to be firm as well. Mm. As well as you have to realize that no matter what, you are still a woman. Mm. In a, in a male dominated field, as well as in Africa. Mm. And for me, I'm not just a woman, I, I, am, I am a disabled woman. That is mm. three strikes against me. Mm. But then, like mm. I said, by the time you meet me, you've already seen my work. Mm. My work has spoken for itself. Mm -hmm. So if you have any reservations about me as an individual, mm. the, work, the work that I've done. Mm. Had, had, had put them on hold because, because you've seen my capabilities. Mm -hmm. And that is the most important thing for me. Amazing. We we'll also know that human resource is a yeah. key element to consider yeah. when building an enterprise. Yeah. Now, how do you hire? That is a big problem here. <laughs> it's a really big problem. Because finding people can either make or break your business. Because if mm -hmm. you hire the wrong person, mm -hmm. your business is screwed. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I use a recruitment agency, sometimes I use referrals to hire. My best hires so far have been via referrals. And I like to hire people who have just finished university, who are fresh, who mm. don't have any preconceived ideas about how things are done, because then they are trainable. Mm. And, and I like to give them, them the chance because we, we, because when, you, when you look at various job descriptions mm -hmm. and, and job opportunities, they say they want five years working experience and all those things. How will they get, <laughs> get, get those five years working experience if, if nobody gives them the chance mm -hmm. straight out of university? So I always like to give people the opportunity because I was given the opportunity. The, when I went for, my, for the job at Soft, I had no work experience in, in software development, mm. and yet I was given the opportunity. But I feel it is important to pay it forward and give others the, the opportunity as well. Okay, tell me, Farida, what's your leadership style? My leadership style? Um, <laughs> people will say I am a, a dictator. <laughs> <laughs> I like to, to give instructions and have them follow to the letter. Mm. That is how we work with computers. You tell them what to do and they do it. Mm -hmm. no, no questions asked. Mm -hmm. but, but then that doesn't work with human beings. So <laughs> I've, I've had to learn how to lower the, my, my, my tendencies for, for the dictatorship and try and be more conciliatory. So mm. instead of telling them what to do, I call them into my office and we have a discussion. Mm. And, I, and I ask them, what do you think of that? What do you think of this? I think it should be done this way. Then I take their feedback that we come to a compromise mm. that everybody is happy with. So that at the end of the day, they feel as if it is their, their, their decision. Original idea uh, uh -huh. as well. Uh, and I, I, I listen to them. Of course, if it doesn't make sense, I'll tell, tell you plainly that, that this one, yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> You can't, you, you, can't, you can't deal with it. Mm. But if it makes sense and, and put into 
the company is the show, why not? I mean, mm. we hire smart people. Mm. We, we, sh we should allow them to be smart. Mm -hmm. if, 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 if you didn't want them to be smart, then you might as well hire people who are not smart, who, mm. who just follow, follow instructions to the letter. So as a leader, in the past, I have failed. Tell me about your failures as a leader. Well, obviously, you can't, you can't get it right all the time. Sometimes you make certain decisions mm. that may harm your business because you are learning every day. Every day is a mm. learning experience. Mm -hmm. no, nobody knows it all. Mm -hmm. The most important thing is how to overcome when, 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 when you fail, mm. how to get up when you fall down. Okay. So failure is a part of business. So how important is delegation to you? That is something that I'm still struggling with. <laughs> <laughs> I've learned how to delegate a, a bit in the past. During, during this past three or four years, I've been the, the CTO of Ladisha. But it's still difficult for me because it's like you, you give something to somebody to do, the person doesn't do it the way you want it. Mm. Yeah, like, why didn't I just do myself? Mm -hmm. it and then. save the time. Yeah. yeah. But then you cannot be a leader. If, if you do not delegate, mm. because it's a matter of cost-benefit analysis. My time is worth X times time to... The, the person I'm delegating it to, his time is, is worth X times one. So why should I be doing what, what he can be doing mm -hmm. when I can be doing something else that only I can, can do? do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So when you look at it that way, then it makes it easier to delegate. Yeah. What are those other skill sets that um, CEOs need to acquire in managing people? You, you have to be able to trust your, your employees, trust that, mm. that they know what they are doing. If they don't know what they are doing, then they shouldn't be, be your employees. If they are still with you and they are messing up, then, mm -hmm. the, then there's a problem. Either you are the problem or they are the problem. Mm. And, and, and if you are not the problem, then they have to leave. Mm. And you have to get more competent people okay. in, in, into the organization. Beautiful. What values are important to you and your firm? Trust, mm. reliability, okay. and the fact that when we say we'll do something, we do it. Yeah. Mm. St stability as well. So okay. trust, reliability, and stability. Okay. Yeah. Now tell me about this book you authored, um, The Definition of a Miracle. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I wrote it so long ago, I can't remember what is in the book. <laughs> okay, the book is, is, is a, it's about my experiences I had mm -hmm. when, when I moved to Ghana in okay. 1988. Some of the experiences that I had coming to Africa, mm -hmm. I went to Ghana. And with, at a child with a disability. It's, it's, it's not a biography, but I, but I fictionalized some of my experiences I wrote about it. Nice. Uh, hope I get to read that book. I also hope so. <laughs> <laughs> now tell me, Farida, what is your biggest letdown in your career so far? I'm not where I want to be right now. I wish my company was in five different countries by now, but we are still just in Ghana, we are now moving to Nigeria. But the most important thing is to expand when you are ready. When you are not ready for it, mm -hmm. you, you are suddenly exposed to other markets. Mm -hmm. And what happens? You fail. Mm -hmm. because, because, because you do not have the, the resources and the capabilities needed mm -hmm. to manage those markets. This is Under 40 CEOs. Farida has mastered the computer and has taken charge of her life. Farida values trust and reliability, but what does she do with her time away from computers and codes? How does she enjoy her resources? I must find out. So I have a few quick fire questions for you. Hey. What do you love to eat? Italian food. How would you describe your style? Stop on. So what's your favorite brand to wear? I don't have a particular brand. What CEOs do you currently look up to? Apparently. What's your favorite car to ride in? I currently use a Benz, so I guess I can say a Benz. <laughs> What's your favorite travel destination? The Caribbean. Your favorite book of all time? The Bible. What book are you reading right now? Hard Choices. 
by Hillary Clinton. Beautiful. Then lastly, I would like to know, Farida, mm -hmm. what makes you happy? When I make other people happy, I'm happy. All right, thank you for coming on Under 40 Cedar. Thank you for having me. Hi, my name is Farida Badu, and I, and I am an Under 40 CEO, and you can be an Under 40 CEO too.